nation, and that we cannot impose our will upon the other 94% of mankind, that we cannot right every wrong or reverse each adversity, and that therefore there cannot be an American solution to every world problem. The reduction of global tension must not be an excuse for the narrow pursuit of self-interest. If the Soviet Union and the United States, with all of their global interests and clashing commitments of ideology, and with nuclear weapons still aimed at each other today, can find areas of common interest and agreement, then surely other nations can do the same. Nations caught in regional conflicts, in racial issues, or in the death throes of old colonialism. Chronic disputes which divert precious resources from the needs of the people or drain the energies of both sides serve the interests of no one. And the badge of responsibility in the modern world is a willingness to seek peaceful solutions. It is never too early to try, and it's never too late to talk. And it, the United States, as a major nuclear power, does have a special responsibility to the world. It is, in fact, a threefold responsibility a responsibility to our own citizens, a responsibility to the people of the whole world who are affected by our decisions and to the next generation of humanity. We believe the Soviet Union also has these special responsibilities and that those responsibilities require our two nations to concentrate less on our differences and more on the means of resolving them peacefully. For too long, both of us have increased our military budgets, our nuclear stockpiles, and our capacity to destroy all life on this hemisphere, human, animal, vegetable, without any corresponding increase in our security.